Power by Ecotec. Hello everyone, this is Victor here with Worldwide Corals. I got the 1500 gallon tank behind me. We're very, very excited guys to show you what's been going on in the past year or so. The tank right now is an SPS forest and originally was designed to be 100% SPS. And when you start all with small frags, nothing is wild. You kind of tend to lose, um, to get impatient per se. And one day I'm looking at it and I realized there were certain zones, certain areas, based on how we designed the rock, that they weren't getting enough flow. And I saw an opportunity to add goniopora's, few torches, maybe some hammers, some frog spawns, few mushrooms here and there. It just worked out pretty well. I'm happy with it. Josh is not. Some of the challenges definitely I will have to say was Aptasia. We took care of that by adding a copper band. But the first one that we introduced a while ago, I want to say on the very beginning, it started picking up some corals. We were able to remove them. Now this one has been there for about two years and we've been free of Aptasia ever since. Another challenge was some of the algaes, the wildfire algaes, you know, some ugly faces that we just uh, encounter along the way. And we solved that by just keep on adding different tanks, not just the same type, you know, just different type of um, zebrazomas, orange shoulders, and whatever the case may be, we just added many different types, you know. So when we first start um, a tank of this size and the corals are smaller, they don't demand a lot of um, calcium and alkalinity, you know. So as the corals, they grew, very fast. The calcium reactor media, we just start bumping it up, just adding more to it, and then it start being consumed faster. So therefore then we uh, start adding cogwasser just to be able to keep up with the demand and top of doing weekly water changes. It's definitely been pretty challenging to tell you the least, you know, it's something that we have to come with. I think we check for alkalinity on the daily and calcium at least three times a week. The flow, believe it or not, as I was mentioning earlier, when it was just Acroporus, it was challenging, but it became more challenging after we found those dead packets to be able to put um, Goniopora's. Now, some of those dead packets that we found with less flow sometimes had too little flow. And then as the Acropora, the table in Acro, so the big Montiporas and all these corals they start just getting bigger, they start stopping the flow for the other corals. So we just play with it a little bit. I think we play with the intensity of the return pump. Uh, I think when we did one out of the three pumps, we just increased the intensity of it. It's just a small adjustment that you have to do in a regular reef, but in a bigger tank like this, it's a little more challenging, you know? We try to keep 100% of the corals going healthy, and we've been doing a heck of a job doing that, I think, you know? One of the things that we encounter, the tank is big, but we keep so many uh, different species together of Acroporas that they're constantly trying to grow into each other and sting in each other. So when we, when we prune them or frag them, we try to go in the middle where they're touching each other, so after you do that three or four times with the coral, the coral learns not to grow so much in that direction, and it just tends to grow more the other way. And that's how we're able to keep so many corals together. So when we're looking at par, uh, roughly when you look at a very top of the water in the middle, you're looking at about seven to 800 par. When you look towards the middle of the tank, uh, you're looking at about three to 350, and at the bottom you're looking at about anywhere from 100 to 150 on the very bottom. Those numbers might seem like sometimes to some people they're not enough, uh, we found great success with those numbers. We've never been the type of company that pushes to overlight a tank. I think it's a balance of nutrients and light, and we found that to be a happy balance for us. Bubbles is just a love-hate relationship. It's just a gigantic fish that we, we rescued from our customer. He was a baby and he wasn't doing too good. And for some reason, we just kept him, and uh, they named him Bubbles because he was always at the top of the surface just blowing bubbles. And I'm sure if you guys can see him behind me, I wouldn't be surprised if I turn around. There he is, blowing bubbles. <laughs> I'm telling you, I can't make this up, guys. He drives me crazy. Yeah. He does that every single day, man. He doesn't stop. Uh, Casper, as you guys know, Casper's been with us for 12 years now. It's our, it's our mascot, you know, it's our favorite fish. We feed multiple times a day. We do algae about two times a day. We have two different algae clips. It keeps the tanks nice and calm, we noticed that. They, it, it takes the aggression away when they're being able to graze all day long. For food, uh, we do a few different foods. Uh, we do our own reef mix in-house that we feed them. We feed them multiple times a day, along with products from Reef Nutrition. We mix just different products with our frozen food, you know? And we see by feeding multiple times a day, the corals just react much better. Yes, we, we have to be constantly fighting nitrates, you know, and phosphates but it's worth the price. You see a lot of nice colorations. The fish are happy, the corals are happy, and, 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 and that turns out to be a happy environment, you know? So lately we, we added a school of about 40 uh, green crummies. We had about 
20 Bengay Cardinals. We've been adding some Rasses. Uh, we added some Antheas as well. Uh, we still got plenty of room for fish right now. We still we want to add about 50 to 100 small fish. To reach a tank to look beautiful like the one behind us, it takes time, it takes patience, it takes a lot of reading. It takes no switching what you're doing from week to week. A lot of people made the mistake to go to someone's tank and the first question they may ask, what's your lighting schedule? And they might go and change their lighting schedule thinking it's gonna work for them. No two tanks are ever alike. You try to always gain, uh, reach for stability and you will see great results. Look, in other words, if you're gonna switch something, switch one thing at the time, wait two to four weeks, six weeks, see if that a specific change that you did made a, a change if it did so, then see, was it for the worse, was it for the better? But the problem is people change multiple things all at once, and then a lot of times people don't realize that by making a change, you might make things worse versus making it better. Then people get more frustrated, and then you end up getting out of the hobby. So the main thing is just be patient, don't listen to everyone, find one source of information, and the rest just should be easy. It shouldn't be as tough as people think it is. Uh, thank you guys for joining me to see this beautiful 1500 gallon tank that we got behind us. Uh, I can't wait to show you what we're going to be thinking on doing next. On the meantime, just please don't forget to give us a like, a subscribe in our channel, and I'll be seeing you guys soon. Thank you.